So you bought it before you had your license? Exactly. That's cool. It's kind of a tradition for me. I first buy my first moped without a driver's license. That's amazing. And this car, and now I have a bike. Uh, it's also a project uh, without my bike license. Okay. Oh my god, is that a Supra? It actually is. And many of you probably don't even know that this kind of a Supra exists because this is a Mark III before like the, the actual Mark IV that everyone knows, not the BMW Supra. I love you guys. It's, uh, it's, it's still a Supra. Somewhat, in the extent. It looks kind of super. But anyway, uh, the main subject of this video is the uh, Mark III with a uh, 7M GE engine. I think it somewhere might have a turbo or not. It does not. It does not. It, it's still it a six cylinder. A three liter inline six. Yes. It's uh, actually the predecessor of the 1JC and the 2JC. Uh huh. It did come with the 1JC, but did, that uh, only came in Japan. Uh huh. So this is what you got in Europe. Nice. So what's the power? It um, has 204 horsepower and I think uh, something like 252 uh, uh, torque. 204, not too bad. What's the weight? Like uh, it's 13? Really heavy, uh, is it? Really? Yeah, it's a, it's a boat. It looks actually not. It's like, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it looks really good. But it looks like an S13, but then a bit bigger and heavier. Yeah, it's uh, the big rotor of the S13 now, yeah. actually. Amazing. Is more, 200 kilograms more. <laughs> so what's the like any other mods on the on the car? Pretty uh, stock actually. It's only got an exhaust. Yeah. From the cat bag. Yeah. Uh, it has the coilovers right now. They're tiny. Okay. The um, green stuff. The, um, rims and the wheels. Yeah. They're yeah practically uh, new. They're three months old. Uh huh. And uh, it's basically all this car needs. And a bit of love. <laughs> uh, that's uh, unavoidable. I of course. Of course. Of course. Cool. Well, no, I'm excited to experience it because I've never driven, driven this one before. So I guess let's hop in, do a lap, see what it's like. So, made it onto the track. Um, the car has ABS. <laughs> it has it. At least so, so I, I have been told. It has it. Yeah, only so. had it to use it once. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So at least there's that and everything else there's pretty much nothing. Well, it has power steering, but a good, good sound. because they're yeah, much exactly. safer like but yeah it only works what in, yeah. in the government's uh, benefit so. only when it's good for them yeah, exactly for well, starts kaspeke <laughs> yeah well this is Toyota sort of basically right yeah no but it's actually quite good I mean the, it's of course for a quite an old car but it's still emotional like it, yeah yeah it's not really a fast car but it's really the feel you get from it yeah with the sun and everything the steering I like it. It's, uh, <laughs> good to hear. It's a good emotion. And the torque is quite nice too. Yeah. So. And about 5000 RPM, the sound is really nice. Yeah. Yeah, uh, really cool. That's yeah, really nice for road use because only after 4000 it starts screaming. It's almost like a like a VTEC, like after that. Four and a half, yeah, but it is. It is um, acoustic um, extra air. Okay. It's sort of like VTEC with an older variant. Okay. And it also uh, uh, extra injection at some point. All right. So, like you said, you can really feel that at like four and a half thousand RPM. Yeah. Street racing car. Yeah, they were built as a Grand Tourer. Exactly. It's, it's a 
than having a cruising car, so. Yeah, it's more actually more for luxury compared to the skyline, but. It is, I mean, especially when you look at, uh, at all the options we have here on this car. It's a 36 year old car, as you said, but we have like, the seats are so customi customizable. You have like lumbar support, you can uh, adjust to your liking. It's unthinkable, but yeah. Japanese cars were always ahead of their time when it comes to technology and all the indications. We have a digital clock. That's quite good. It's only not very accurate. No. I mean, like one to two, it uh, gets two extra minutes. Uh, so it's not the atomic clock. <laughs> no. I think that will be too heavy. <laughs> yeah, the brakes are a bit juddery, but... Yeah, I think that. it has to do something with the steering rack. Uh, because I replaced the front rotors, but it keeps doing it. Okay. But I've never had any issues with it, so um, if it breaks, it breaks. Yeah. So, speaking of the brakes, it breaks. So, how long have you had this car? I've had it for three years now. And, and like, any, like, maintenance issues uh, or...? Um, a lot. Okay. I bought it uh, as a um, barn find. Okay. So at first uh, I was still a student in high school, so yeah. I said like, ah, two weeks, brakes are stuck. Uh -huh. But eventually it took one and a half years, everything was stuck, everything was rusted. Uh -huh. So uh, yeah, it took one and a half years and uh, by the time I already got my driver's license. So you bought it before you had your license? Exactly. That's cool. It's kind of a tradition for me. I first bought my first moped without a driver's license. That's amazing. And this car, and now I have a bike. Uh, it's also a project uh, without my bike license. Okay. That's cool. You have now at least a uh, motivation to, uh, to work something for, so... Yeah, exactly. It's always been a uh, motivation to start doing something. That's cool. So yeah, you, you had it for three years, and then uh, yeah. what have you had to change on it? Uh, the engine. Okay. Yeah. The, Is it easy to find parts nowadays still for it? No. It's uh, really difficult, actually. I'm lucky I, I'm in a WhatsApp group with yeah. uh, all the people who have uh, parts. But otherwise, uh, I think this would have went to the scrapyard. Okay. How many parts is already needed? Okay. Because when it drives, it's uh, very reliable. But um, here and there, there are some parts. Yeah. Sometimes you need to replace them. It's a whole car. Yeah, yeah. It's hard to find. I can imagine. Exactly. And when you do find them, it's uh, you pay top price. Yeah. So what was like the the price they asked for it as a, it being a barn find? If you don't mind me asking. Um. Back then it was uh, 3,600 euros, including transport to the garage. Okay. So nobody cared about them, like uh, no. as much as like for example R32. When a few years ago they became their exactly. CTRs, so, like the, the prices went like quadruple. Okay. Yeah. No, not as crazy as this, and I'm happy for that because then I can still uh, keep buying parts as a student. Yeah. Because sometimes the aftermarket parts are cheaper than the OEM parts. Nice. So what's your like long-term plan with this car? Just keep it, enjoy it, and yeah, drive it until something breaks and replace it. <laughs> and well, yeah, I'm a student now, so I don't. Luck is when preparation meets opportunity. 
Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> of course, you were lucky. You were in the light, right place at the right time. But still, yeah, like, was really, a lot uh, of things prepared. had to had to come along, like come together. So yeah, exactly. That's a nice easy lap because we have lots of yellow flags. But that's also good for the car. But even aside from that, we had like some flooring uh, sections. And temperature stays nicely. I mean, we don't see the oil temperature, just the oil pressure, but that's all optimal. So, yeah, good car for yeah. for its age. So, yeah, nothing to complain about the engine. Uh, it's only well the brakes because it's a heavy car. They can uh, get hot sometimes. Yeah. But for the more, I don't really have anything lacking about this car. So, what's the? Is this the original mileage? Uh, it is. Yeah. Two hundred and one thousand kilometers. The engine, uh, yeah, I swapped it, so that has uh, 100,000 uh, kilometers less. Yeah. But the rest, uh, everything is old. Okay. That's not too bad. Oh. Yeah, mostly, I think. Yeah. talking to my uh, co-passenger yeah and I was looking at the engine bay and I was like seeing something smoke and I, saw, I thought am I hallucinating or something and I was looking at it again and I was thinking shit my brakes are on fire uh, <laughs> now in this case I mean we had lots of yellow sections uh, I tried not to use them too much yeah just, uh, just to make sure that everything will survive well no amazing I, I loved it like thank you so much for this experience because yeah, no like problem. I said I never uh, drove it even has aircon. Is it working? No. <laughs> ah, okay. But <laughs> even optionally, the heating, you could. Yeah, exactly. You could fix it. It's it's a work in progress. I mean, to me, it's optional. Uh, the driving part is more important to me. Yeah. Except when it's uh, winter. That's amazing. I love it. It has cruise control. Yeah, it has everything you want to have. Wow. No, it's and it's on the steering wheel, so I I always think of it like a game. <laughs> like a gaming console. <laughs> Fantastic. No, I really. Really enjoyed it. Thank you so much for this experience. Yeah, thank hope, you very much for having it. Hope you had fun as well. A lot of fun. Good, good, good. Fantastic. No, yeah, I was really uh, doubting if I wanted to drive myself or uh, you letting it drive. But I think you letting it drive gives me like a standard of which I can drive with. And it's yeah. always with this car. When I'm pushing it and I can see it's at its limit, then I maybe buy the next part. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's like, um, yeah, the car and me are growing together. Yeah. Nice. Nice, nice. Well, we're gonna enjoy the traffic jam. Yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. And uh, luckily today is not that super hot. 